South of the Empire, south of the border princes, south even of the Badlands lies a land of which very little is known. Even those who know its true name, Nihakara, do not say the word aloud. They refer to it in hushed tones as the land of the dead. No living thing stirs in this place, but it is far from inhabited. The deserts and cities of Nekara are the domain of the Tomb Kings. Few men have been there and returned to tell the tale. The land of the dead is steeped in black rumour and shrouded in mystery. The legends say that, in the times before men, gods walked the world as mortals. It was believed by the ancient Nekarans that when the desert gods first arrived on that land, they fought armies of demons and fell spirits that lasted for many centuries. In numerous inscriptions, carved in tombs and monuments of ancient cities, it is written that Petra, the sun god, drove the darkness back riding a resplendent golden chariot and the evil retreated north to escape destruction. When those cataclysmic times passed, the gods transformed the land into a prosperous realm and ruled there for thousands of years until the birth of the race of man. In exchange for their worship, the deities offered to protect and watch over those who lived in that great land. The gods taught them how to read, how to grow food and how to make a better life for themselves. Thus was this great civilization born and through centuries of work and culture it grew powerful. The ancient kingdom of Nikara was at its peak while other men were still primitive and savage. There was a time when Nikara stood as the crown of human civilization. A golden age when its cities shone with majestic splendor. Its armies conquered entire nations and its kings ruled as gods amongst men. With the passing of time and many centuries of prosperity, the kings of those incredibly prosperous lands refused to let something as mere as death deny them their lifetime's accomplishment or rob them of their rich possessions. It was believed that upon death, each king would be mummified in an elaborate ritual to preserve them until the day of awakening, where they would arise into a golden paradise filled with all their subjects and any belongings that were entombed with them, and in this place they would rule for all eternity. In this way, huge tombs were built for the kings, their servants and their possessions. Even entire armies were buried alive with all their weaponry and equipment needed to protect their king in the next life. With centuries, Niakara became a society obsessed with death and immortality. Skulls and skeletons became common symbols of everlasting life and they were carved onto shields banners and chariots of the priest king's armies. As the Nikaran's obsession with death flourished, the architecture and the landscape of the great land irrevocably changed as well. No expense was spared in paving the path for immortality, and the splendor, wealth and power of Nikara was breathtaking to behold. Over time, the necropolises became bigger and shadowed over the towns of the living, but this realm was destroyed when the Gash unleashed a catastrophe in which all the living things in Nyakara perished in an instant and raised the dead from their tombs. When they arose from their sleep, the Tomb Kings would find themselves as undead creatures, a shadow of their former splendor. They would also find their great kingdoms plagued by hordes of barbaric invaders, their riches stolen by the treasure seekers that roamed the lands and opened the ancient tombs in search of wealth. In addition to the damage suffered by plagues and war, the lands were forever tainted by the dark sorceries unleashed by Nagash. They are vast plains of bones and skulls that come to life without warning, and skeletal fingers reaching out from the sand to grab anything that moves on the surface into a sandy grave below. Nihakara is now a land of desolation and constant change. The sands shift every time and there have been many occasions where entire cities have been revealed by the moving sands only to be covered again in dust a few days later. Condemned to a life that was a fraction of their former existence, 
the two kings now fight to restore their vast kingdom to its former glory, striking forth to reclaim the lands from the living. Battles tend to be fought along the caravan routes and in the vicinity of ancient necropolis, not only because these attract adventurers and tomb robbers, but also because of the tomb kings who awaken from time to time to fight amongst themselves. Encounters with orcs and barbaric tribes are common and they are dealt with the full uncontained fury of the undead host. The sacking of the treasures is an offence that can't be forgiven and the Tomb Kings ensure every last trinket stolen is returned to their domain. Dark Elves expeditions have occasionally managed to advance deep into the land of the dead. My retainers advise caution, but I am no coward. The first slash is the sweetest, and I always strike first. When that happens, increasingly bigger armies are raised from the infinite pool of bones that is the desert, and the intruders are dealt with swift vengeance. Neakara has also been invaded more than once by lizardmen from the Southlands who are constantly searching for lost plaques looted from their temple cities in the past. The records account for one time when they reached the capital but they were finally defeated in the city of Kemri where priests focused the rays of the sun through the mirrored prisms atop the city's gold-capped pyramids. Thousands upon thousands of battles have been fought in the barren sea of sand that is near Kara, and it shall be so until the end of times. Thank you for watching. On this channel, we're putting together fan-made cinematic episodes featuring historical and fantasy battles based on the settings from the Total War series and, of course, good old World of Warhammer. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and hit the notification button to be the first to watch the next battle.